Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Implement Specials for our Cyber Clydesdale. Today, our victim is the Power Harrow. So, this is something you're interested in getting, stick around. Alright guys, so this is our all new power harrow. Um, you may have seen our older power harrows in our older videos. We've The gearbox and the central action has not changed at all. We've refined um, and honed the height adjustment and, and hitching and, and there's a couple of really, really cool little things about um, the power harrow we want to get into today. Uh, first of all, I've got it in the fully retracted configuration on the Clydesdale. Um, it's just you can anyway depend on your context and your setting but today I want to I want to run it like this um, and I've got it at the full extension first thing I want to cover um, and I've just become aware that in my other videos I don't do it as much as speak on how it interacts with the Clydesdale assuming you already know or seen our videos on the Clydesdale itself but the the Clydesdale um, obviously we can we can spin the handlebar forwards and backwards we've got a little lever on the side here you just stand on that and you flick it around and then you lock it back in. You can also have it locked out like that, so so you steer with your fingers. Obviously, it's got the um, it's got the steering in your right hand and the speed in your left hand. So one hand operation is is all that's necessary once you're going down the roads. And you may see me doing that um, as I'm as I'm as I'm working here. However, I'll set it just off to the side one click. Just pull that towards my foot, and then I'm off to I'm I've, I'm I'm on an offset. Um, now. The first thing on this new Clydesdale that we've worked on is we've got this click, this quick click system. It's the exact same we run on our flower mower now. And I dare say um, we've got it coming out on our on our normal mower. Um, but this is this is a system that really works. Um, so you just pull this back, um, and then you drop it to whatever depth you want and let it go, and it'll lock straight into any of them heights. I had it on the very top setting for driving around. So you'll set your depth. And then run from there. Okay, and, and so like on all our other motors as well, we've got reversible tines, so you can spin clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the tine. Of you, so they all do the opposite to each other, so they don't crash. Um, but this comes really handy if you've got too much uh, weed in your bed and it starts getting clogged up. You can reverse it; it'll often spit a lot of it out unless it's too far gone. Um, and also, it comes handy if you pick up a rock. This will stop if you've got a really big rock. Um, it puts out I don't know about. 200 newton meters of torque across the whole agitator. So there's a fair bit of torque in there. You want to keep your hands and feet well away from it. Um, but with that said, you can you can then if it if it gets rock jammed, in, put it reverse and spit it back out again, um, and then you get that rock out. So there's no damage done to any of the the machine. Um, implements plugged in, turned on, ready to go. So let's do a bed. First thing I'm going to do um, is set the depth. I just drop him down a little bit more, and so I'm going to go fairly deep on this one. Uh, run a pass up here. A really nifty little secret is when you're going down your bed, you want to look, keep your eye down the row. Now this here will come with practice. It's, it's a bit more of an art than a science. Um, getting straight rows, and any good farmer knows it's it's um, really exciting part of being. So you want to keep your eye straight down the row, um, and fix on a, a point in the distance um, down that way from me. And fix my eye on it through the through the center line of that tire because I'm offset basically on that center line of that tire. Um, so yeah, speeds down, and I'll I'll line up first. So steering with my right hand, and then lifting up. The power harrow is one of our heavier implements. Um, all our implements weigh between 40 and 60 kilos. Um, our power harrow is 54 kilos. Um, so we recommend, and I always leave the battery box open that is a design feature not a design flaw the battery box is especially made as a counterweight and so now I can lift with one hand the the um, the power harrow which before is is very heavy um, so now we've got it lined up I'll just set him up a bit straighter so I steer with my right hand uh, turn the speed down Dead man on, PDO up full speed, and then we get moving. Now 
There's many benefits of going electric, but one of the which is you can see we can have a conversation whilst I'm power harrowing because the noise is so low. And there you can see we've done that row. Um, it's fairly level. We had a couple of bumps and stuff over it. You can see this, this land's already been tilled. So you hate it going like, yeah, okay, it's electric, but it only does tilled land. We'll head over here to a bed that hasn't been turned over in six months. I've just flower mowed it, um, and we'll rip straight into that there, and you guys can see how that goes. All right, so one of the reasons that I have the wheels in nice and tight is because specifically I wanted to cultivate close to this last plantation because we got weeds coming up here. It's not recommended and it's definitely suboptimal to have weeds on the bed you're going to power harrow. I would always flower mow optimally before doing that. But for demonstration sake, it's going to work just fine. You can see that wheel in nice and close, I can get really close into the last bed. Also just so you know, I've, I've set the speed with my left hand, and now you can operate it one handed if you want, just steering with my right, keeping that nice and close. Alright, there we are at the end of the row. Um, this soil here hasn't been touched in several years with our, we've got a John Deere um, 3320. And um, so we just maintain this with the Clydesdale now, this bed. So it's been flower mowed, that's why you can see there's not much here. And if you've seen the flower mowing video, I drop it down. Um, and just by the way, this is, if you go back and check out our flower mowing video, this is what was left after that. I think it's been three weeks now since we did that. Um, and so yeah, with the power hoe. Now, something, as rare as our flower mower in that it's reversible, um, our power hoe is the same. And as far as I understand, we are literally the only ones on the market that have it. Now I only typically run it in reverse with my wheel extenders on, but I'm gonna do it today just so you can see how it's done. Now this here is the same with removing and attaching your implement. So um, in case you haven't seen it before, first thing you wanna do before you, you, you move an implement is turn it off. The second thing I will typically do is unplug it. It's important that you unplug it. Though we have our new connectors that um, that pull out by themselves if you accidentally leave it in there, it, it is it is important that you unplug it. We've also got these dust caps that must always stay on if that's not in use to stop the dust from getting them connectors. Next thing I'll do is close up the counterbalance lid, like so, because once we pull this implement on off, it'll be extremely forward heavy. Now we've got to pull out this pin, just leaning back on the handlebars like that a little bit, takes the pinch off it, and it just comes straight out like so. I stick it in my pocket, and then pull back. Well, you can leave that there actually, and then drive away. Now, if you didn't turn that button off at the start, as soon as you disconnect that connector, it'll start beeping at you, that's your problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drive forwards, and it comes out like so. I will now then just drive around, like that. Um, I probably should have left it a bit straighter. So I'll just straighten it up a little bit. This um, Clydesdale as well, in case you didn't know, has um, dead man switches on both left and right hand. The right hand dead man switch goes forwards, the left hand dead man switch goes in reverse. So it's extremely quick to go from forwards to backwards. It's as simple as a press of a button. So I'll just back it up like so. Now it's fairly close. I'll just lift the back up here and that slides in. There's tapers on the end of the box section, so when it gets right in there, it pinches in to a square that's laser cut in the back of here. 
and that's what holds it so rigid, not the pin. The pin just stops it from coming out. And again, I'll put that pin in, then I'll lift it up, well not lift it up, I'll push this down and pull this up either or, and that pin will just wriggle in like so. Okay, now the pin's in, we've got the, the, the power harrow in reverse, which you say, is, you could look at and say it's very silly like that. Um, oh sorry, we've got a plug in our, our connector, so just pick whichever one you want, left or right, um, depends if you have the dual or the single connector. Pull the dust cap off, wriggle it until it's firm, and then turn it on. Then what I'll do is I'll reverse the handlebars like so. Lock it in there. Lift my handles up so it's comfortable. Reverse my steering direction on the handlebar. And now what I have <laughs> is a front attack um, power harrow. Now this is actually really useful when I'm doing this sort of cultivating because you watch the power harrow first and then you follow your trail along with the um, with the wheels. I'll just change this to opposite side. Um, got that down one. So, exact same, I've reversed the thing, turn my speed up, I turn my handlebars down, speed up here. And this time I've left the lid in because I'm on the back side, but it leaves a bit more weight on the power harrow because I can't lean on it to push that down. So I'll leave the lid in and then we just start it up. Because of the front, we have to drop that down a bit lower. So you can see in the end there I picked up a heap of weeds, as we mentioned it's very suboptimal to go with weeds, so it wasn't sinking in properly, but we picked up them weeds, and so um, just showing you that there, that's why it's running, we reverse it, and see it just throws them all back out again, all oh, a couple of tenacious ones in there. So instead of spending... Instead of spending countless hours yeah. pulling these weeds out, yeah. just flick them out like so and you're done. Okay guys, so that's the um, Cyber Clydesdale with the Eco Harrow. Um, the, the Eco Harrow obviously fits onto our handy as well, so that's that's no issue. And, and most of our implements do cross over, they've got different attachments and so, but um, yeah, I hope you guys like that. If there's any other questions, things I didn't cover, there always is something that occurs to me later on. Um, just drop in the comments section or send us an email or, or message or whatever. But I hope that gave you guys a bit of a comprehensive overview. Um, we've come, just come to me now. There's no maintenance required on the gearbox, it's full of grease. Uh, when I say no maintenance, it probably will require a grease change of 20,000 hours. But once you've done that 20,000 hours, you'll probably be worn out or dead. So, with all that said, um, thanks for watching again guys. Any questions, let us know. And until um, next time, have a good one.